about uh, PowerShell uh, advanced debugging. Welcome. Um, I'm a uh, software developer on the uh, Microsoft PowerShell core team. Um, so there's my um, contact information. Uh, you know, feel free to contact me. Um, I've been working on the PowerShell team um, for almost six years now, which interestingly makes me still kind of a newbie. PowerShell uh, has been around for a long time. A lot of people on the team have been there for 10 years or more. Um, one of my uh, uh, areas uh, that I work on in PowerShell uh, responsibility for is um, uh, uh, remoting uh, some of the debugging stuff, uh, workflow, actually a lot of different areas, but uh, mostly uh, PowerShell remoting um, uh, and remoting uh, related systems. So what I want to talk about today is um, more advanced scenarios in PowerShell script debugging. Um, this slide is really just about uh, you know motivation. Um, when you have script uh, that's just not working, there's a lot of ways you can diagnose it and try to figure out what's going on and fix it. Uh, a lot of times you get away with just looking at script output, uh, verbose output, um, trying to figure out what's going on with your script, and sometimes you can fix it at that point. Um, but really, <clears throat> a lot of the times what you'd really like to do is just get a debugger on it, a script debugger. And uh, PowerShell actually has a pretty nice script debugger uh, that you can use to um, break into script, uh, step through script, set breakpoints, that sort of thing. Um, but um, traditionally it only works um, for interactive scripts, scripts that uh, you uh, run in the ISC or in the console. Uh, but PowerShell is um, a pretty capable platform. It allows you to create and run scripts um, that are not being run interactively. They can be run as background scripts, they can be run as part of a uh, application that hosts PowerShell. And these are more complex scenarios where um, you can have a complex script that you'd like to debug, that you have a debugger on it, uh, and be able to step through the script. Um, but uh, previously, that just was not possible. You can only debug the script if you were running um, you know, uh, within the ISC. So anyway, this talk is about how to use some of the new PowerShell uh, version 5 features uh, for debugging these more you know, difficult scenarios. Um, and of course, one of the great examples is DSC script resources. So that'll be one of the um, uh, demos. Uh, so live debugging goal: What do you want to do um, when when you want you want to put a bug, debugger on a script? Basically, the script is not working. Uh, you want to find the issue that's breaking your script code, fix the problem, uh, and move on. Uh, and usually, the first step is trying to get a debugger onto the uh, onto, onto your script. Um, and again, as I mentioned before, debugging interactive scripts is really easy in PowerShell. Uh, you know, you open the script file in the ISC, you set like, uh, line breakpoints, you run the script, you step through it, um, you can see what's going on, so that's really nice. Uh, but debugging non-interactive scripts is more difficult, actually it was impossible until version 5. Um, and these kind of scripts are like uh, background running scripts, PowerShell has um, a rich set of APIs that lets you uh, create uh, um, scripts that can run concurrently, that can run in the background very easily. Uh, it's not running in the IC or in the console, so you know, how do you debug something like that? Uh, some uh, examples of that are you can have like a custom management tool that's based on PowerShell and PowerShell scripts. Um, WinRM remote host, when you do uh, PowerShell remoting, uh, WinRM uh, creates a process that hosts PowerShell and uh, within that runs uh, the script remotely on the remote machine for you. So that's just an example of how uh, PowerShell can be hosted in the process. And then of course the, the, the most complex uh, scenario is the DC uh, 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 configuration scripts when they run. They run on uh, usually on a different computer in some kind of a uh, hosting process uh, inside a run space. And if you have uh, DOC configuration script that's not working correctly. Um, you know, how do you debug that? You know, preferably you like to debug that in the context in which it runs. I mean, a lot of times you're developing probably your configuration scripts um, in some kind of a mock-up on your dev machine. Um, it works fine, but then you deploy it onto uh, another machine, it's not working. So what we'd really like to do is be able to put a debugger on that live session and debug that script in that context. 
so the main concept for uh, advanced debugging, uh, I think, is redirection. Uh, the whole idea is uh, putting the debugger on the script that's running. It's basically you have the ISE on your dev computer, and you want to point that and redirect that to where the script is running and debug it. Um, and there's like three commandlets uh, that um, conform to this redirection paradigm. Uh, one is enter PS session. That's actually a panel that's been around since uh, version two. And that's how you do remote, uh, interactive remoting. Uh, you enter PS session, and you're basically redirecting the uh, uh, command line to a remote machine. So when you type in the command line, it's being executed on the remote machine. Um, and then, of course, output's coming back into the console. Um, but what's new for V5 is uh, two new uh, commandlets. One is called enter PS host process. And what that does is that allows you to redirect the command line um, <clears throat> to um, a local process on your machine. And that can work within a remote session. So you can connect to a remote machine, and then on that remote machine, you can connect to any process that's hosting PowerShell. Um, and then when you execute commands, it's actually executing in that uh, environment. And then the third thing is uh, a third command that's called debug run space. And what debug run space does is basically redirect the debugger, points the debugger at a particular run space um, uh, that's executing the script. Uh, and then so then you can debug that script in that context. Um, so just take a second here of what our run space is. Um, and it basically says that every PowerShell script that runs um, within a con it runs within a context called a run space, as we call them internally. And what the run space is, is basically the context in which a script runs. It has the variables that you've defined, it has the functions that you've defined, um, modules that you've import, uh, breakpoints that you set, everything uh, is all kind of contained in something called a run space. So when you talk about debugging script, it's kind of synonymous to say you're talking about debugging that run space. It's a run space that's basically uh, uh, running the script and uh, providing the context for that script to run. So when you hear things like uh, you point, point a debugger to a run space, what that means is it's really the framework in which script, script uh, is being run. Um, and I just want to provide a, uh, just a diagram, just kind, of, just kind of see it, kind of get your head around it because it's you know, fairly complex. You know, over on one side of town, you have your computer, you have the PowerShell IC open, um, but uh, you want to debug script that's running on a machine someplace else. Um, and so um, the, the, the first thing you do is you use enter PS session so you can connect to uh, that machine across town. Um, and then within that machine, there could be multiple processes that are hosting PowerShell. It could be a PowerShell console, you know, there could be some sort of application process that, uh, that you're interested in, maybe like a DSC um, configuration, you know, local configuration manager um, uh, that's running script. And so the next thing is you want to then point to that particular process that you're interested in. And that's uh, when you use the enter case host process commandlet. And then within that process on that remote machine, uh, there can be multiple run spaces that are running you know, script. And then so one of those run spaces you're interested in is a script that you want uh, to debug. And then so you want to use debug uh, run space to point to that particular uh, run space and debug that script. So it's fairly complex. Um, you know, these commandlets are uh, not something that you're going to use every day uh, because it's a kind of a complex debugging scenario. But uh, when you need it, you know, they're very powerful and uh, it's something that can really save, uh, save you if you're just facing a problem of scripts that aren't running and uh, you're trying to figure out why. It's just really nice to be able to debug it in a live session. So uh, from here, I want to pivot to the uh, uh, first uh, demo. Basically, what I want to demonstrate here is uh, the process of um, uh, redirecting to a host process that's running a script that you're interested in, and uh, within that process, finding the run space that's, actually, that's running the script that you want to debug, and then attaching the debugger. And actually, what uh, this uh, demo is going to do is um, uh, simulate a process that's running uh, four uh, simultaneous uh, scripts. Uh, one is going to be, um, actually I have thrown three here now, but one is going to be uh, just a script that's running a continuous loop that you're going to uh, attach a debugger to. Another one is called copy file script. It's, it runs very quickly. And so this one's going to be set up so that uh, as soon as it starts running, it, it pauses and waits for a debugger attached so that you can debug it because it runs in you know, a few seconds and you want to debug the script. 
Uh, third one is just a, a simple um, algorithm that extracts a sub, subarray from an array. Um, and in this case, uh, it's going to use a new command called wait debugger. And what this does is uh, um, a command that you put in the script. And when it executes, it uh, puts the execution engine into uh, a wait mode. It, it stops execution and waits for a debugger attached. And the nice thing about wait debugger is that um, you can put it anywhere you want inside the script. Um, and so the debugger will stop and uh, uh, the script execution will stop and wait for a debugger at a particular point, which is kind of nice when you're debugging. And the fourth one I don't have list here is uh, when you set up a, a run space, and again, it's going to run the copy file script. Uh, but in this case, you're going to give it a line breakpoint. You say, I want it to stop at this particular line in the script file, uh, and then wait for a debugger attach. So to do this, actually, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, simulate, um, and for some reason, my laptop is pauses like this for a few seconds before it does something. I'm not sure why. I think I'm overloading it because I have a couple of VMs running. There we go. So I'm creating a, a brand new, clean um, PowerShell process. I don't see that. I need a mirror. Uh, do I need to drag it? Here, or we've said it to mirror. You can do it this way. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, now, this is what I don't get. So if I drag it over there, I can't see it on my screen. Is that a duplication? You, 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 you have to add your mouse to extend your page like a monitor. Window key. Window key and then go to extend? Uh -huh. Duplicate. Oh, duplicate. Ah, uh, got it. Ah, okay. Yeah. Thank you. I can see it fine with mine. So, I have no problems. I can see it right here. Uh, so, so what I've done, I've created a, a brand new console. I'm pretending it's not an interactive uh, console, but it is. Uh, and in it, I have a... Uh, A script that's going to simulate uh, what a uh, PowerShell application, PowerShell host, hosting application would do, which is basically create run spaces and then run script files. Uh, I won't spend too much time on this, but I do want to show a little bit how this works because it's kind of the same pattern um, uh, over and over again on how to create a run space and then execute a script inside it. Um, and then, and then uh, once this is running, then I'll show how you can uh, attach to the process and, uh, and then debug each of these uh, uh, scripts that are running. And you can see, okay, good. So uh, first one is uh, basically, it's basically a pattern where you create a run space, we give it a name, I create, some, create something called a PowerShell object, uh, you associate it with that run space, and then you say, okay, run the script file. And this is one that just runs continuously, so it's just gonna uh, run in an infinite loop. And, and it's going to have a run space name called uh, query rs. Uh, the second one is the copy file. It runs very quickly, so again, we create the run space. Um, but this is a little bit different. When, after we create the run space, we use a command called enable run space debug. What this does is it sets up the run space uh, in debug mode and also uh, sets a switch called break all. So what it's telling the run space is as soon as you start running the script, stop at the very, very first uh, execution point in the script and wait for a debugger attach. Is a little bit dangerous, something you definitely don't want to have in, in production environment because the script will look like it's um, hung, it's not running, and that's because it's, it's waiting for a debugger attach. So this is something you only want to do in, in investigations. Um, and the third one, uh, and again, I kind of want to go through these because they're slightly different. This one uh, is the max sub, sub array. Uh, again, it's creating a run space. Uh, adding in uh, variables and, and executing it. The only difference is that inside the script, there's a wait debugger command. Uh, and so it is also going to stop and wait um, uh, for a debugger attach. Um, but there's nothing we did special to the run space. It's, we actually had to modify the source code. So <coughs> wait debugger is a very powerful command. Again, something you don't want in the production environment because it looks like your script is on. Um, and the downside is that in order to use it, you have to modify the script file. But it's very powerful for, for just saying, I want the debugger to just stop at this point so I can investigate what's going on. Uh, and then finally, the last one 
uh, again, I'm doing a copy file again. The only difference is um, I'm setting a breakpoint in the run space at this particular uh, line in the uh, file. And one thing to keep in mind is, again, we have to tell the run space to be in debug mode, because normally when run space is, is executing a script and a breakpoint uh, event fires, if there's no ISC debugger available to handle that, then it just ignores it, it just continues running. But in this case, we don't want it to, we want it to stop and wait for a debugger attach. Um, okay. So over here on my clean uh, process, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and uh, run that script. Uh, get the process ID, 4112. Then I go back to here, and then I want to show a new command called uh, get ps host process info. What this does is it uh, lists all of the processes on uh, your uh, local machine um, that is hosting PowerShell and is available for a connection. Um, and, and we see a bunch of them here because I have a few open. We see the IAC, obviously. Um, the one I already forgot. Uh, 41 12, thank you. <laughs> uh, this is the one that we're interested in. These are other consoles that are running. Um, so now we can use the new redirection uh, command I'll call in the PS host process uh, for 4112. Um, and uh, uh, and we, we, can, we can attach to that process. One thing I kind of wanted to show here, uh, and maybe I'll just go ahead and do that now, just to back up a little bit, that this inner PS host process will work in a uh, remote session. So with just one laptop, it's hard to simulate all this, but I'm going to just pretend that, that this is running on a remote machine, so I'm going to do an inner PS session. And actually, it's a loop back to this, this computer. And of course, uh, for some reason, my four laptops seems to be really, really slow. Um, and if this is going to take too long, I can, okay, there we go. So now we're, and, and again, we can do a get PS host process. We can't pretend that, okay, we're remoting into a remote machine. We do get a PS host process. We want to um, enter PS host process uh, 4112. And the thing to kind of look at is the uh, command line. It tells you what's going on. It tells you that you're connected to the remote machine, local host in this case. Uh, and within that, we're connected to the process 4112. Um, and then from here we do a get, this is another important command, like get run space. And what this does now is within this process it will list all the run spaces, active run spaces uh, in this process. And now finally we see kind of what we expect to see. Uh, if we look at the first one, this uh, is because this process that we're in is actually a console host process. So it always creates a default run space. So there's always a number one run space one. Um, and that's been created so that when you type in the console, um, that's what executes your command in your script. But then we see the, um, uh, the run spaces that we've created. And this is what we expect. And of course, the first one, the log query RS, the availability is busy. That's because it's running in a continuous loop. So every time we look at it, it's going to show busy. But the copy file RS and these other three all show availability in breakpoint. What that means is that they're not running script. It's stopped and it's waiting for a debugger attached. Um, again, it's got to be a little bit careful with that because um, if you're not aware of it, you just might think that the script's taking forever to, uh, to run. It's not actually running. And then the other one here is a little bit interesting. This is called remote host. This is a temporary run space that has been created when you run the enter PS host process. Um, what that does is that executes uh, the commands that you type on the uh, command line. So here, like, you type in the command. This is running in that remote host process um, that's, that's connected to. Um, when you um, uh, exit uh, the, uh, the attachment to that host process, then that temporary uh, run space goes away. So uh, then I just want to uh, just show real quickly how then to debug these run spaces. <coughs> Each one is a little bit uh, different. So you debug run space, log, query, RS. That's the first one. And what happened is when you uh, do a debug run space on a script that's already running, uh, it attaches the debugger and then it sets the debugger into step mode immediately. So it just stops at the very next execution. And then at this point, um, you can step through the code and do, do all the debugging you want. And you have the command line here so you can 
uh, query states and um, machine state and variables and all the things you can do in debugging. So you have a nice live debugging session there. Uh, what I'm going to do is do a detach. When you type detach at the debugger prompt, it detaches the, the debugger. And uh, so now if you get a run space, uh, we see that it's busy again. So it's busily running in that infinite loop. Now if you do uh, debug run space on the first copy file, rs, And I did this before. Um, I'm not sure what's going on there. So we're going to skip that. Um, that's weird. So yeah, don't look at that. <laughs> we're going to move to sub array. I'll, I'll take a look at that later. Uh, this next one. Uh, this one is what we expect. Uh, this is the code I was talking about. Uh, for the weight debugger, what I did was if a global variable is defined as true, then I go ahead and execute the weight debugger, which means that it puts it in step mode so that the very, the, the very next line that executes, um, it stopped and waiting for the debugger attached. So now you can go through and do uh, debugging uh, as before um, until you're done. And then if you want, what I kind of like about this is that it's um, conditional. So if you've done debugging, and this isn't a loop, so if you don't want to do it in loop anymore, you can just um, set the variable to false. You're messing up GG. I'm sorry? You're messing up G on the variable. Oh, thank you. The, the bifocal, I, I can't see very well. Uh, and, then, and then you can just do an F5 to continue. Um, and, and it continues to run, it's very fast. One thing to keep in mind is that the uh, debugger attached remains. So you get this little uh, uh, a warning that says commander script has completing, completed, but the debugger is still attached. Uh, so like if you new script started running, you can debug that if you want. But if you've done debugging, then you can, you can detach the debugger with just control C. So it takes you back to the command line. Um, and let's go one more. Uh, debug run space, how do you file? There's two, and this is one where we set the breakpoint. One thing to kind of keep in mind is that um, you know, this one this one is still busy. This one has gone to available because it's 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 um, completed running the script, and so the run space is available to run a new script. It's kind of interesting to note. Um, and this one is still waiting for a debugger to attach. And here is kind of what we expect. It's on line 21. Uh, which is what we set, and so you can debug from that point. And uh, again, I'll just do a detach by typing detach at the debug prompt. <coughs> so when you're done, you can just do an exit PSOX process, an exit PS session, and uh, why that's taking so long. I'm getting these weird pauses. See if I can get back to the slides. Uh, so yeah, so any questions? Be, feel free to interject. Uh, there's time at the end of the call for questions. What run space are these in? Are these under a user run space or a system run space? Uh, the question is, what run space are they in? Are they user run space or a system run space? Uh, you're talking about uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the credential con uh, context in which they are running. So it's in the same context that um, the uh, host process was created, so it's running in, in that context. Uh, so if it was created with uh, admin credentials, it's that, or any other user credentials, it's that. So as you, the way it actually works is when you create each of the run spaces, and then you execute script in that run space, um, PowerShell spins up the thread, um, and, and it's the thread uh, based on the, the process context. Uh, any other questions? Uh, if the run space you were attaching to was multi-threaded, using the .NET classes to create a, a multi-threaded core. Mm -hmm. Would you be able to attach to the separate threads? The question is, if the run space that you created was multi-threaded, yeah. uh, could you attach to each of the threads? And the answer is that uh, each run space can only run in a single thread. So you can't, you can't have multiple threads. Um, and so the way that uh, PowerShell does concurrency is per run space. Um, so, you know, multi-threaded multi, multi 
multiple threads in script is, is really not supported. It's, it's, it's just a single thread. Are you talking about just creating a run space pool rather than just a, an individual run space? So, current, so one of the pieces of middleware that I have running uses a .NET class to create a thread pool right. and then uh, evaluates group ah. memberships in parallel um, for each one in the thread pool. Gotcha, gotcha. I understand. So yeah, so what you're saying is that uh, inside your thread, using a .NET API to create uh, multiple threads and then execute uh, uh, managed, managed code on each of those threads. And uh, in order to, do, so now you're outside of the script uh, debugging. So in order to debug that, then you have to use a NATO or manage uh, debugger to debug those threads. Um, PowerShell script debugging is only for um, debugging script execution. Uh, any other questions? Oh. But in that case, if you had a run space pool, you would see all the run spaces in the pool and theoretically be able to debug those. Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, the question is, if you had a run space pool, um, which, is, which is a construct that uh, collects and, and manages uh, multiple run spaces, that you would be able to see all of those run spaces um, and uh, debug script in each one of those. And the answer is yes. When you do a get run space, uh, all run spaces that are created, whether it's within the pool or uh, separately, uh, is shown. And it's shown in the list until all those run spaces, uh, those objects are disposed. And, and as well, on jobs, because jobs usually have a job job that's actually doing the work, so you have to double set into those run spaces. So the question is, uh, how would you debug uh, jobs? Um, and I think the um, assumption is that jobs are running in uh, multiple run spaces. Actually, PowerShell jobs uh, run in uh, child processes. Uh, and inside those child processes uh, uh, are created run spaces. So it's done that for extra isolation. It's fairly heavy weight. Um, and so in order to debug, um, uh, there's actually two ways. In order to debug a job like that is that you could actually attach to that process and then find the run space and debug it. But there's also um, a way from um, the, uh, the original client console to do a debug job. So when you get a, a job object back, there's actually a debug job command line. I'm not talking about it uh, in this uh, talk. But uh, you can debug the jobs through uh, that way as well. And it actually goes through the PowerShell remoting and then uh, talks to the uh, child process. Um, interestingly, actually, I've created, I think other people have created uh, thread jobs. And what they are are lighter weight PowerShell jobs that don't run in separate uh, process, but run in a separate run space. And uh, if you use my thread jobs, then yes, when you run those scripts, what it does is it, it uh, creates new run spaces in which to run those scripts, and you will be able to see those, and you can uh, uh, debug them using this technique. Paul, is that available using thread jobs? Is that on gallery or um, The question is, is that thread job available? I, uh, I've been meaning to put it up on the gallery, and uh, I can't even remember if I did or not. I think I did a few months ago. Um, but if not, I, I will do it. Um, there, are, there are other people have done, and this is, it's a common idea, and other people have done the same thing. What I did was make them similar to regular jobs. The only difference is that um, instead of running a, a child process, it runs in a, a, a thread. The nice thing about that, too, is that um, the objects that you're dealing with are live to that process. You don't have that serialization layer going from one process to another, um, and so the objects are live. And plus, it's much faster, too, because you don't have that overhead of uh, creating uh, okay. so the child process. Gallery, is it called for the thing's called thread jobs, yeah. Uh, if you look it up in the gallery. Um, I just can't remember. It's something I've been meaning to do, and then you forget about it, and then you know, a month or two later, it's like, oh, I should do that, and then I forget about it. Uh, but I think I did. Uh, but I'll make a mental note to, to check that. Okay. So, oh, good. So we have some time. Um, we have 15 minutes. What I'd like to do is. Uh, go from here to a more, uh, actually a real debugging scenario, which is with DSC resources. Um, let me just get back to if this is gonna work. Um, so DSC class resources. Uh, the way those things, uh, the way DSC class resources execute, um, 
you see that all these things that we just talked about uh, can be used to, to debug those because it follows actually this, the same pattern. The DC configuration is usually run on a little machine. Um, it's run in a host process, uh, some obscure WMI PRVSE host process. Um, and inside that host process is a run space that's writing your script. And so it would be really great if you could attach a debugger to it when your script is not working correctly. Um, and just, again, just for a little bit of visualization, see how kind of complex it is. You, know, you have your uh, machine uh, on one side of town, you want to connect to another machine or maybe a virtual machine, and inside that there's some process that uh, DSC has created and is running your script, um, and you want to attach to that and, uh, and debug that script. For this, um, demo, I kind of wanted to uh, take a quick second here and, and show something that was actually kind of cool. Um, in order to demo this, what I did is I created uh, a couple of um, personal machines on this laptop. And uh, on that machine, I have a very simple DSC configuration that I want to run and that I want to debug. Um, The, uh, as it turns out, when I was doing this in my office, all the machines are domain joined, and so when I was at home trying it, I'm no longer connected to that domain, and so I can't connect uh, to it. So I can't do the full demo that I would like to do, um, but, uh, but I can do enough to show how uh, to, uh, to, to debug basically a DSC resource and just kind of how that pattern works. Um, one thing I just wanted to show real quickly though, which is kind of neat, is that um, even though I can't connect to my VM through WinRM because I'm not domain joining anymore, there is something new called PowerShell Direct. And we worked with the, uh, or actually I worked with the Hyper-V team, and uh, it's now possible to um, connect PowerShell to a VM on, uh, on your machine uh, without WinRM running at all. Uh, and in fact, it doesn't have network enabled at all because it goes through a new um, uh, uh, socket layer that the Hyper-V team has created. So you can do something like, these are the two VMs that I have. And you can do uh, enter PS session now. And give it the name and then just shut off the type quite so much. SDR. Did I miss the R? Okay, thanks. <laughs> So and, 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 and so now you can you, know, you can manage uh, this VM, uh, which is kind of neat, without having to go through uh, WinRM remoting. Uh, and then on this VM here, I have uh, as the DSC class, uh, uh, just just for testing. Just make sure that everything is set up. Yeah, just the way I wanted to. Uh, and so, how do you go about debugging uh, this DSC uh, resource class? So you start out, the, uh, and, and what the DSC team uh, created was um, enable uh, DSC debug, and you set it to break all, and what that means is that now when it runs, uh, uh, it's kind of a big hammer, when you run uh, uh, DSC resource scripts, um, it's going to be in break all mode. It's going to break into the debugger and wait for a debugger attached. But it gives you some information about that. So now you can say start DSC configuration, uh, give it the, uh, the, the class, uh, long wait, verbose. So it runs, and then it gets to a point, uh, and it tells you with a warning um, uh, the resource, uh, which, which is test is waiting for PowerShell script uh, debugger to attach. You use the following commands to begin debugging this resource script. And then it gives you a series of commands that you can run. And of course, they look familiar because they're exact same things um, that we were just talking about. I'll just put them up here to see. Um, and again, uh, you can do an interview session if you need to connect to the remote computer. A lot of times you don't need to because you might just have a, a remote desktop. In fact, that's how I'm going to do it. So you can skip that step. And again, this is something that we've seen before in the PSOS process. 
And then I say that it tells you which process, because there's probably a ton of WMI processes on there, so it gives you the process. Another interesting thing is that it actually runs in a non-default app domain. So when that's the case, you have to specify the app domain name. And then finally, uh, it uh, gives you the run space that you, that you want to debug. Uh, and of course, everybody that sees this is like, well, why do I have to execute three commands? And that's a good point. And actually, I have a prototype, uh, not released, not fully tested yet, um, but I will release at some point, where instead of executing all three commands, you just execute debug run space with a, basically a kind of a connection string. It's just a hash table. That has all the information, so you don't have to you know, type in you know, three or four commands or whatever, you just do one. Um, something, again, that uh, I can't demo here because uh, right now it's just based on connecting via WinRM. Uh, and that's not working right now on my laptop, uh, but it's something that uh, uh, we'll get out at some point. So, okay, so anyway, so the DSC configuration is stopped, waiting for a debugger catch. Um, what I'm going to do, since I can't load in with PowerShell, I'm just going to go directly to And uh, what you can do is you can just copy and paste those commands, or um, it's pretty easy also to just do and to get PS host process info. And if we look, we can see like, well, there's really only one WMI process that's attachable um, that's running a DSC worker. So you know, we're pretty sure that this is the one that we want. Um, you do post process, and the same pattern. Um, and then we do get run space. We see that, oh, there's just one that's in um, breakpoint mode, so that's the one that we want to do. Uh, so then we do debug run space number three. And now this um, is kind of interesting. Uh, and the blog, actually, I created a blog about how to debug DSC resource classes. Um, this is a little bit confusing because what's happening is that we don't see any file, right? We kind of expect it to go into the DSC resource uh, implementation. Um, but really, what happened is when you say, uh, when you set the run space to break all mode, it just says stop at the very first um, script execution point. And um, what happens is that each of these uh, methods in the DC resource class is executed within uh, a helper script. And so the debugger doesn't know that, it just stops in that helper script. So it's a little bit confusing. So what it's doing is it's getting ready to call the test. Um, uh, method on the class, but it hasn't yet. So in this case, what you need to do is you just need to do is F11 and just step in um, until it finally is executing the actual script, and then IC will bring up the, the file. Now the good news about this, oh, uh, question? This actually is uh, based on the demo yesterday, like the demo that this problem is present in the same one. So when you start debugging a file, it's like a thing. So this, oh, there's a demo yesterday about this? I was just going to say that. Yeah, so I wanted to show this because it hasn't been released yet, but the problem is fixed. And I, I was going to demo it on my other VM that has the fix in it. So uh, yeah, a person in the DSC team uh, very cleverly fixed it by, um, uh, before they execute the uh, class method, they, they get the class file, parse it, um, and find out uh, the line numbers. So they actually set breakpoints on the line numbers. So the nice thing is that, in the next release, um, you won't have this problem. But I just wanted to mention it so that when people see this, you know, they don't, uh, they're not too confused uh, about what's going on. Uh, so yeah, so this, is, this has been fixed. Um, and so, well, yeah, we're just about done. So I think this is probably about as far as, as uh, I can go, or I want to go right now. We can go, oh, there is one thing we could talk about real quickly. Uh, and again, if there, we can uh, have some quite time for questions if you like. Uh, so I'll let you decide. Uh, so we're going to talk about some of the gotchas, and one of them we just talked about now, and that is that the enabled DSC break all stops in class uh, in the calling script. Um, and that's been fixed. That's not true anymore. Uh, another kind of a downside to DSC debugging is that every time a new class method is called, they reset the run space. But when you reset the run space, it also removes all the breakpoints. So all the breakpoints that you put in are gone. So you have to put them in again. And that can be a little bit confusing. Um, there's a bug on that, and I think that can be addressed uh, from the DSC team. Um, the LCM hosting process that you attach to, 
uh, that can go away. Um, that's not always a problem, um, but sometimes when you have uh, your IC attached to it, um, you can do things like edit files you know, through the remoting system, uh, but underneath it, uh, they recycle the process regularly. So if you do something like try to save a file that you edited, sometimes the, uh, the underlying process goes away and then you get an error and that can be really annoying. Um, that's just something to keep in mind. Um, and then the last thing is that just break all is painful. If you're running a number of classes or more than one class, it's going to stop in every one of those class methods each time. And if, if you're running like 10 and it's the seventh one that you want to run, you have to go through each one. Um, and really, ideally, what you would like to do um, is set a breakpoint. So I, I really want to debug this class file at this line. And that's not supported in DSC now, but uh, I'm pushing the DST team to add that. So it would be really cool when you say enable a DSC debug, instead of break all, you say, you give it maybe like a hash table of this is the file and these are the line numbers. And I wanted to break at that point. Um, so that's really all uh, I have. Uh, if there are uh, you know, any more questions, uh, let me know. Oh. With the breakpoints changing every class method call, if my test method calls my get method, um, all the breakpoints that are set within that specific method call remain. So like if you're calling helper uh, functions or helper methods within the, like say, the test or the set, those all work fine. But the, the next time, like it goes from uh, get to, so like say you should yeah, so get, test to set. Yeah, so I get, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so the next time it's a new method call, then they're all reset at that point. Um, that, that's actually because get, set, and test through DSC, they're called, uh, so every time you want uh, DSC to call, that one of them creates a new run space. Yeah. That's why it includes all the breakpoints. That, they actually, uh, uh, sometimes it creates a new run space, so the question is, or the uh, comment is that uh, there's a new run space created for each of the method calls. That's uh, sometimes true. I know that they do uh, create new run spaces, but mostly they recycle. And so there's actually a reset uh, function that you can call. And part of that reset is to reset, when you set reset run spaces, everything's cleared, including the breakpoints. I think it can be modified so they say, oh, reset this run space, but keep the breakpoints. Um, because, you know, I'm running this in a context where, you know, it's the same class or something, so you know that you want to keep the breakpoints. So I think that can be addressed. Um, and again, there's a bug tracking it right now. Uh, so I think it will be at some point. questions? Okay, well I think that's all I have then. Uh, oh, contact information. Uh, feel free to contact uh, contact me through uh, you know, MVP or uh, GitHub or, or, or whatever. We try to keep uh, uh, you know, tabs on all kinds of different areas. Uh, and happy to you know, talk to you or um, after the meeting as well or, or take any comments that you have. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.